2024 general elections, the government accused of recruiting uh, MPP foot soldiers into security services. Let me quickly get into that story there. And um, on citynewsroom.com, we have here election 2024, government illegally recruiting MPP foot soldiers into security services. This is an allegation by the minority in parliament. And it says here, the minority in parliament has accused the government of illegally recruiting MPP foot soldiers into their security service ahead of the 2024 general elections. Now, the caucus alleged that all MPP parliamentary candidates have been offered 30 slots for recruitment into the various security services in a calculated attempt to compromise their December polls. Now, the minority leader, Dr. Kessel Atoforsen, conveyed these concerns during a press briefing, asserting that any unauthorized actions by these recruits uh, referred to as MPP thugs in uniform will be met with strong resistance from the National Democratic Congress supporters. And I quote, it is unacceptable that a government continues to put cheap partisan considerations ahead of the overall peace, security and stability of our country in the run-up to the 2024 elections, he stated. Dr. Atuforsen added that any strategy by the government to skew the 2024 elections in their favor would not succeed, emphasizing that the NDC is prepared to counter such maneuvers. All right, let's just leave the story here and come to you, Paul. Um, your thoughts on this? Yes, Goku. <laughs> Recruitment into security services mm. in Ghana. Mm. It's a very <coughs> funny one, you know, and, and it's quite funny. Mm. Both parties are to be blamed for all these. All right. You cannot pinpoint at NPP today and turn around and forget what you also did yesteryear. Mm. The NBC pretty much did the same in, in the years that they were in office. I mean, uh, we've read stories of uh, political uh, affiliates mm. and party members giving slots you know, here and there during enlistment. Sometimes uh, you have the original enlistment done, gone through the right processes and channels. Then they put the list elsewhere. Mm. And before you know, um, order from above brings a special list. And they are the ones recruited. All right. Mm. So again, the, the, the hula baloo about who is recruiting who and all of that. I mean, our politicians must understand that these are practices both of them have been doing. Mm. If it is the ordinary Ghanaian going in, in terms of meritocracy, I'm sorry, he wouldn't get it. Mm. Look, they can queue all they, they want to queue at Elmina, wherever, any of the regional uh, uh, centers that they've been recruiting. They go through all the processes, and at the end of the day, you have a protocol list that is given to these people or personnel to go by, whether you like it or yes. I mean, there have been situations where people have paid cash to be recruited into the army or the police. Mm. And even with that, they do not get access. Why? Because there's a special list elsewhere. Mm. It is not who you know, and it is not who knows you, but it is who knows you and knows you better. Mm. That you can even mention your name. That end, you can get access. But where you and I come from, Pramkese or Epinaman, <laughs> or Amon from in Chebi, <laughs> there is no way you get access, either through the fire service, or the police, or the army, or whatever. Hmm. So unless a politician holds your hand, and it should not just be any politician, somebody in good standing, hmm. perhaps an interior minister, or a minister of state, or maybe an MP, yeah. all right? There'll be situations where you, you find MPs yeah. 
you know, campaigning that, oh, I was able to uh, give a certain number of my constituents uh, into the security forces yeah, and yeah. today, and they boast yeah. of this proudly. Yeah. And it did not start yesterday. It did not start today. This is something that's been recurring over the years. And until we as a nation decide deliberately that enough is enough, mm. we are not going to allow mm -hmm. our politicians <clears throat> to be always recruiting for us. Yeah. Listen, I've had a chance to engage some of my colleagues who are in the military. And they tell me, Paul, do you believe that somebody who is being recruited as an officer cannot even read nor write. This is somebody being recruited as an officer, not just the basics. No, not a sergeant or corporal. This is an officer. An officer cannot read or write. And we are given such a position, or you are given such a position because you belong to a certain party. And it is as as that is bringing you, so necessarily you have to go through. And that is the challenge they are facing. But that's a recipe for disaster. Total chaos in the security services. Go to the immigration. It's even worse. The police, nothing to write home about. All right? And so people who are affiliated to politicians, uh, the family of politicians, cronies, and what have you, they but, are the ones gaining the opportunity to be recruited. But I would have thought that the robustness of the existing system would um, make everybody that has come in eventually find their level. It's like, Kweku. if you're worth your sort, you will last. If you're not, you will fall out. Kweku. Has our system ever been robust? Just, just well, let, let's be honest. No, some. well, I mean, if, I, if we talk about the military, for example, I would imagine that, yes, our system has been quite robust. Ugu. Yes. Unless my imagination is just Ugu. running wild. But I'm just really? telling you yeah. a real case scenario mm. in the military mm. where somebody cannot read nor write. Yes. And I'm saying. But is being recruited and, by virtue good, of the political good, or yes, politician good. that is what? But assisting what, him. Yes. But what I'm saying is that once he's in the system, mm -hmm. the system will make him find his level. Is that, <sighs> is that not the case? Um, Should that not be the case? I'm afraid that may not necessarily suffice. Because if at the end of the day he becomes an officer and gets to have a desk, that's <clears> it for him. He gets to be there for only God knows how long. Yeah, but he will not progress. Well, to the extent that he's in there and he's comfortable, that's as far as he goes. Mm. All right? Okay. So... Um, if we are to allow the structures to work, yeah. all right, at every given interval, uh, those at the helm of affairs will say that, oh, we are recruiting um, within this period, and so we are accepting uh, uh, applicants from whoever is interested to join in either the military or any of the forces. Mm. But that is not the case today. Sometimes it is done secretly. Okay. And before you know it, they are there. We have Ghanaians eh, who wanted to be in the army so bad. They tried every means possible. They did not succeed. Guess what? They leave the country and they are even sought after in other countries. Even today. In America, in the UK. Mm. Uh, let, I, let me just limit it to be England I, I, I have and, and, and I have Scotland. I have a friend like that. He couldn't make it to the Ghana Armed Forces, but now he's in the U.S. Army. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. So, so why are we allowing ourselves to, to go through this almost all the time? And I don't think that the U.S. There Army doesn't to, that seem to be any forces. end in sight. Anyway, please wrap it up for me. All right, cool, cool. So, uh, for me... Until we take a deliberate decision as a country that we are winning the hands of politicians off our security agencies, uh, I'm sorry, and I'm afraid to say, the story will always be the, the same. The way we've done it, the way we've done it, where mm. the
president is the commander in chief of the armed forces. It's mm -hmm. like the it's like the armed forces answer to the president. Oh, but it's the same elsewhere means, in all means, other jurisdictions. No, I'm, just, I'm just saying that which means mm -hmm. that they are beholden to the presidency and its entire apparatus. That's oh. a jubilee house and beyond. Kweku is is it makes it's a complex. structure. It's a structure, mm. all right. There's a CDS, <clears throat> and you know there's also an IGP for, yeah, for the, the police, the police yeah. right? Mm -hmm. All of these people report to the president. Okay. Okay. And so there are laid down procedures to even appointing the IGP or the CDS. If we are to take off these appointments from the president uh, and allow the system, the laid down structures to work, Believe you me, no politician whatsoever will have that kind of access they are having now. But because um, the president appoints, mm, okay. then that challenge still holds. All right, thank you. If that power is taken away from the president today, mm. and the system works, the structures work, where you do not have the president appointing the IGP or the CDS, mm. and you have the structures being followed, my brother, <laughs> All right. Yes. Oh boy. This alleged situation has always been in the public uh, uh, camera, so uh, and it's it's impacted on the national image. It's sad. Uh, and, uh, also talking about how it affects the chain of command within the security services. Mm. There's also we've seen. I've personally seen a video at the immigration recruitment when the the commandant was telling them, no matter who brought them here. Once they've gotten into the cycles of training, mm -hmm. if you forget who gave them the opportunity to come in. That video was in circulation. We all saw it. Mm -hmm. So like I told you, we may not have the documents to prove that A and B were not qualified. But uh, the, pop, the court of public opinion mm -hmm. is based on these videos we are seeing. Right. The MPs, that like he said, who are beating their chest, that they've offered employment, blah, blah, blah. An MP, a lawmaker. You go and boast and say all this. <laughs> and when the people come chasing you, they say your position is actually becoming threatened because uh, people, uh, the people are looking for money. You went there talking. They mm. talk too much. You are a lawmaker. You go there, you say you build schools for them. Is that what you are supposed to be doing? I mean, so that's a problem they give to themselves and then they end up coming to give us all this problem. Uh, this is a very a situation that is very difficult to prove with the documentary evidence, like I told you. <laughs> but... The words and the running of their mouth in public <laughs> tells us ev enough evidence. And it, in, in fact, globally, it is actually the perception index we use. We perceive what you are telling us is the truth. Yeah. And that's what we use. It affects the, the, the quality of service, the quality of a security service. You are seeing it. <laughs> you see, after hearing all this, excuse me to say, Ghanaians are not dumb. We are not stupid. We are seeing the quality of service. Mm. You know, a police officer stops somebody, you question him, and say, uh, we are to know. I mean, that's it. We just question for common English. It's a problem. My friends say they cannot speak. I had, um, <laughs> I had an experience where... You I... saw the video of, uh, during <laughs> COVID, <laughs> the, the issue for flats. <laughs> we saw it. Your argument has four flats. flats. You saw it. <laughs> I, 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 have a, I, have a, I have an experience where well, uh, um, a few yeah. years ago, um, we were carjacked. Right. At, um, mm. you know, gunpoint wow. um, at home as my dad of blessed memory drove into the house and they took the car from him. When we reported to the police at the ABC Junction, uh, at Chimota Police Station, ABC Junction, the, the one at the, mm. the Mount Seven Police okay. Station, when we reported it there, the officer in charge, he couldn't write English. The, the person ah. taking the statement could not write in English. In a state of trauma, you have to start writing. Yeah, he couldn't write the English. <laughs> so, so you see, like, like a quick one. This, yeah, this no, was it was. We had to it was, what it was, it was, it was very confusing. Was it was very confusing for me because I had never seen anything like that before, and I couldn't believe that the front-facing person. <laughs> so when you collapse right now. In another country, the, the policeman who comes can resuscitate you and hold you in before the other services come in. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, a problem. Uh, you know, so this is a problem. And then the next one is that, look, now we are swaying from state loyalty to party loyalty. Because mm. the people in the service now will be loyal to their party and not to the state. True. Yeah. And that becomes a problem. I think so, this, this rubbish of 
Yeah, buying a was so. It mm -hmm. is nonsense. You, you can see it all around the place. Mm -hmm. It's rubbish. It's mm -hmm. actual rubbish. And Where we, we are now, you can see it around all. You, and it's glaring. It. Yeah, it's but glaring. We, we are pretending, yeah. and that makes you see that we are sitting on a time bomb, allowing people to do what they want. This is a recipe for violence, like you said. And then the international image is at risk. You know when we go for the peacekeeping, mm. Ghanaian soldiers. They've been touted as the highly some, some respected, girl, some highly, highly respected. Highly respected. It, when recently, in recent times, the police service also had the opportunity. The police were going. It, 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 it's been a clap for us all through. Mm. So what are we doing when we do these ones? Look, mm. let us be very careful. I mean, now I'll be, we'll be counting on the media uh, and, the, and other informants to bring. We, we, yeah, we, we believe you with your investigative journalism. Some of these things must come out. You know when uh, 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 then Dr. Raymond Atuguba came mm. out and spoke about the judicial system and the corruption in there? People, they, they went for him. Mm. They went for him until Anas came out with these ones, yeah. the videos we saw. And he, he was vindicated. Yeah. So that's the truth. And then when, when we look at the, 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 we have to name and shame. When it comes out, we need to name and shame and mm. point to people. Mm. Mm. We need to organize in-service capacity building. Now, for, for those who have already entered, you and I agree mm. that once they are in there already, we have no option. There's no time to pull them out. When you pull them out, you once they know how to shoot, progress. they become another problem for you. Mm. So right. in service, now what do we do? Let's build their capacity once they are in there. And then put Ghana first when we are enlisting and not party. <laughs> Finally, let's not compromise the, 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 the security forces. You know, for, for some of the things that we have, is that we have quality security, we have good minerals, we have skilled labor, and that's what we can negotiate for people to come and invest in this country. If you don't have security, nobody will invest in your country. Look, for some of us, my dear brother, I don't know about the two of you, but for some of us, including myself, Ghana is all we have. Mm. We can't go anywhere else. Yeah. Look, technically, we are surrounded by sp French-speaking countries. God forbid, if you have to run into the one of the The French that we don't even speak. When I go to Burkina Faso, what do I say? <laughs> well, you may say, then the, 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 the next one is a poem I like. Silver play, school. silver play. That's what I can say. <laughs> so it, it is very, very risky what we are doing. All Let's right. do it well. Please, let's, yeah. All